welcome back in this short video we'll basically demonstrate a small simulation program to better illustrate the rc4 algorithm so please download these two files which are mentioned main.c and rc4.h and let's try and compile main.c we'll look into the program a little later call this simulation compiles well let's run the program it takes a key as an input let's just give it a b c d e see what happens so basically if you remember the first step of the rc4 algorithm was to ta take an array of 256 bytes now in this simulation we are just using a 10 byte array just to illustrate how the swapping and everything is going on because if we take a 256 bit array displaying it and making you understand concepts with it would be quite tough anyway so starting off we take a zero value array in which all the elements are zero right from s0 to s9 and now we go ahead and initialize the array now in this uh, initialization as you can remember si would be equal to i so as you can see now s0 is 0 s1 is 1 s6 is 6 s7 is 7 and so on and so forth so now the array is in the initialized state now after this we are going to run the ksa now if you remember the ksa runs for the number of times as the array size so in this case it would run for 10 times as you can see the simulation says ksa will consist of 10 iterations plus enter to start now from here on we would basically start a single iteration and display the array before and after it so we are here ksa iteration number one we see that i is equal to zero j7 we'll come into how j became seven and because of which s0 and s7 will be swapped so let's quickly look at the code to understand this So, uh, this contains a lot of comments, so might be a little confusing. The i and j which we talked about in the presentation are being represented by rc4 underscore i and rc4 underscore j. So, note if you remember that i was running from 0 to 255, which was nothing but the array length, right? And then j at every step was nothing but the previous j plus s of i plus the key i percent key length percent array length see this is exactly the same statement which we saw in the pseudo code in the presentation so this is how j is being calculated after that in the simulation we go ahead and print the values of i and j and what will be swapped which would be si and sj would be swapped and here is where the swapping is happening let's go back so now you'll see that i was zero j was seven which means that S0 and S7 will have to be swapped. Please refer to the KSA algorithm bit in the presentation if you are confused of how I and J are being calculated. Now if you notice, before the iteration, this was the array state. That is the identity state, which is the same as this one. Right? S0 is 0, S1 is 1 and S9 is 9. After it is run, what we should find is that S0 and S7 have been swapped, which is the case. Now you'll see that S0 is 7 and S7 is 0, right? The rest of the values in the array remain the same. Now let's go for the second iteration. Now we come to the second iteration. Now in this case, of course, i is going to be incremented by 1 and j would be calculated accordingly using that expression which we just mentioned so and j comes out to be 6 right so now s1 and s6 would be swapped now let's look at the array before the swapping occurs this would have to be identical to the array state after the first iteration and which is the case now you'll see that s1 and s6 would be swapped and that is what happens now s1 becomes 6 and s6 becomes 1 right now we go ahead for the third iteration 
in this we see i is 2 j comes out to be 7 hence s2 and s7 will be swapped if you actually look through the before and after state you'll find that that is what is happening so going ahead we can run this simulation for the 10 iterations right so after the 10th iteration the ksa is done after that depending upon the number of key stream bytes we require the prga would run so it says ksa done about to generate key stream please enter to generate prg output i press and enter uh, by mistake so the first key stream byte has been generated and that is 0x07 right now this key stream byte can be used and zord with any plain text byte which we want to protect to give the encrypted stream so as you can see depending upon the number of key stream bytes we need we can keep on generating them right key stream byte 7 6 etc etc so in this simulation sort of summarizing we took an array with all zero values initialized it to identity values si is equal to i and after that we ran the ksa which contained as many number of iterations as the array size for simplicity we took an array size of 10 ksa ran for 10 iterations scrambled the array after that this array was given as input to the prga and depending upon the number of output bytes we require the prga ran and gave us output as the key stream byte now this key stream byte will be used to encrypt any data which we want right now let's go ahead and look at the code let's look at main.c first now main.c is very simple first of all we initialize the array to all zero values okay let's look at the rc4.h first because that contains the algorithm right so first we define an array of size array underscore length which is going to be 10 for the simulation then we define the i and j for the rc4 calling them rc4 underscore i and rc4 underscore j then we go ahead and describe a very simple function called print array which is just going to print the entire array s array that is this then we introduce another simple function called swap which is going to swap two values of the array that is if you want to swap s1 and s7 then we give the input of s1 and s7 to this swap function and it swaps both the values now we come into the whole rc4 algorithm the first one is init rc4 or rc4 initialization in which we initialize the s array into identity values si is equal to i also we initialize i and j to 0 which we will use in the ksa just exactly the way the ksa uh, the rc4 algorithm works after that there is a function called do ksa which takes in a key as input and the key length so the abcde which we given as input would be coming down here as the key and key length would be 5 now in this loop we do the ksa in the for loop this printf and all is basically for better understanding of the simulation the main loop is here in which we loop from i is equal to 0 to array length minus 1 that is i is equal to 1 to 9 in this case increment i every time and calculate the corresponding rc4 underscore j right simple plugin of the algorithm which we saw in the presentation as i mentioned here i will not be talking about why j was generated in so and so manner and why randomness to some extent you know would be a property of such a generation etc etc my whole point is to just describe to you given an algorithm which you can read off a book how to implement that after that we go ahead and swap both those values just as the ksa mentions this goes on for the array underscore length minus one number of iterations which we saw was 10 in this case because we took a 10 byte uh, an array of size length uh, 10 for the real ksa 
with 256 bytes you would have 256 iterations now before exiting the KSA we once again reset the counters i and j to 0 now we go ahead to generate the PRGA output or the pseudo random generation algorithm output once again this is exactly same as in mentioned in the algorithm rc4i is equal to rc4i plus 1 percent array length and rc4j as defined this is exactly the same i will not even repeat you can just look at that and just map it to this function in the presentation so now going ahead to main.c what we have here is making sure that you can generate the key stream from the given secret key so uh, first of all we go ahead and initialize the array to all zero values then we initialize the array to identity values right so here is where we call init rc4 as we've seen already init rc4 is going to put si is equal to i then on this array we do the ksa now while doing the KSA we input arc v1 which is nothing but the secret key which we saw in the simulation was a b c d e and the length of that key. After that depending upon the number of PRGA bytes we want we go ahead and get the PRGA output and display it using a printf statement. Right? So simple enough exactly same as the RC4 algorithm initialization of the array to identity values running of the ksa and running of the prga as many times as you require the keystream bytes i'd request you to run this uh, simulation with a set of different values and maybe even tamper the array length a little bit to get a feel of how the scrambling of the array works that is fundamental to understanding the whole encryption process and why is it so tough to break encryption this i'll conclude this video in the next video we'll look at the file encryption routine using RC4. Thank you.